Folks, I'm Bruce Curtis, the city attorney. I really don't have much purpose here other than to introduce the program for you. But you can, uh, we're waiting on the quorum. We know one council person's not going to make it, and we have to have one more to even open the meeting. So you'll have to bear with us for a moment. But you may have seen the note as you came in, but the essence of the plan here is folks that signed in uh, will almost certainly be recognized. We'll get that list to the mayor right away. And so long as there's not too long a list and too many people, now here comes our other council person, uh, we'll get through everybody that wants to speak. They do, will ask, are you going to use the podium? I think so. Okay, I'll turn that around here for a moment so they can speak to you. But as the, the note said, if we have 20 people or something that want to speak, we've got to limit this to five minutes or so. The city clerk is going to mind a clock and give you a caution if you're speaking that when you've reached three minutes, and then there'll be a couple to go to wrap up. But So you can make your point uh, briefly without a serious problem, we would hope. Uh, please only plan to speak once if you can tolerate that. Uh, there shouldn't be too much necessary for rebuttal. Nobody's going to speak against you, but you can make your point as to how you'd like this to come, come together. Uh, if you do have questions on design or how the work was done, we have one of the city engineers here, but keep in mind, the project is built. For better or worse, it is what it is, so there's really not a lot of points in going back to question what was done or how it was done or even how much it cost. The question of the moment is, what's a reasonable and fair assessment of the benefit to the property? And that's what you're, you should try and stick to as far as making your presentation to the council. Then when, when you're all done and they've heard from everybody that wants to speak, they have to have a clean list of the stated assessments to attach to a resolution. The bond council people in Omaha that sell the bonds, that finance the project, they've already sold some temporary stuff, given the city the money, and the city's paid for all this, but they've still got to sell the bonds, and this assessment is designed to help pay for the bonds. <clears throat> so they demand a certain format and a clean attachment of an assessment list. So if the council indulges you and chooses to modify anything from the basic assessment list, then I'm going to recommend to them that they need to table a final vote on the assessment list and get it modified so that it's clean and right and they can pass it sometime soon, but probably not tonight if they're going to change any of it for you. Because the list as it stands could be attached to the bond council's resolution. We have to use their form, we have to do what they say, or they won't sell the bonds and suddenly we not only have an assessment problem, but we have a $600,000 problem that the city can't handle. So we have to deal with the bond council people and do as they say. So if they choose to ask the engineer to modify any of the assessment schedules, then we'll have to close the hearing but table a final vote until we have an assessment schedule that is usable. Well, that's kind of the picture for the evening. Uh, I think we'd be ready to open the meeting. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and call the public hearing to order. The Open Meetings Act poster is on the back wall. Would everyone please rise for the pledge? <laughs> Mr. Baird, you have the floor. I don't need 
I mean, any particular hurry, you've got to follow your list. That would be fine. Are you sure? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. All right, then. Corrine, you're up first. First, I'm going to say you better be following that list because that's what the note says. That's why I said I'll never. <laughs> Don't put up a note if you're not going to follow it. I'm Corrine Janovec, and I'm really here for the Legion. And for anybody that lives in Plainview, I think that Plainview should be progressive. In order to be progressive, you have to make improvements. In order to make improvements, somebody's got to pay for it. We all pay taxes, and so it seems to me that all of us are paying for the improvements. When we have an improvement, I think it should be kept up. I don't like to have weeds on my newly uh, paved streets. I don't know who's going to do that, who's going to pay for that. I think that somehow or another there should be a formula that if I owe $10, then I'm going to pay $0.10. Cents. And if I owe $20, I'm going to pay $0.20. Cents. That only seems fair to me. I went to Plainview Public Schools. My husband tells me my math was not very well. So I'm not even going to go into the statistics on how you figure who owes what. But I do know that our taxes should account for something. And I don't know how you're going to decide that, but that would be my concern tonight. The other concern I have is once the street's already done and it's redone, I think that's a maintenance thing and not a new issue. Thank you. Well, I'm a member of this community and I'm really not affected by this paving, but I do, uh, I'm on the, that they can do it any time in my area, and I'm concerned about the way they do collect and, and assess people for this paving, which I think can be improved a whole lot. I had a uh, talk with the administrator before about a, a fair way to do this, but uh, I think we all should be responsible for any improvement on our property that we should be responsible for. But I don't believe that that person that, that owns property should pay for paving for the whole town which is using the streets. I do think we ought, if we're going to pay these streets, everybody ought to be responsible for paying for it. Well, that's all I got to say. Gene Thompson? <laughs> As you know, I've been up here a couple of times. You've all have pretty well heard my comments on my section out there. I've lived there 49 years. It was a county road, the county oiled it, the county maintained it, and everything has been done by the county for them 49 years. And now it's that nine tenths of a mile has got paved over the last, you know, three, four, five years. And it appears to me that the only two people that's going to pay for that nine tenths of a mile is Larry Shaker. So I just think maybe back when the county was paving the rest, if there had been a little more negotiation with Larry and I and the county, maybe we could have got it done a lot cheaper. Thank you. Street along with a lot of these other people that are here tonight and originally they estimated that the West Street cost to be 326,000 but then it was lowered to be estimated 276,000 which would be $170 per linear foot and actually it's very close to that $168.87 However, this number is quite a bit higher than all the other projects. And of course, one of the reasons is because we have a wider street and we have thicker concrete because it is a truck route. And, and Mr. Holton in his August 3rd edition of the Plainview News said that the Nebraska law is very clear about this. He says, the owner of the property that abuts the street being paved are responsible for the paving based 
on the benefit to the owner. And the benefit to the owner is the key here. So who is benefiting from West Street? We are property owners for sure because it is a nice street now that we didn't have before. But others are also benefiting. We have the farmers bringing in their heavy loads of grain and soybeans to market. We have the livestock man shipping cattle and hogs to market, bringing home replacement stock. We have business people in town doing business with farmers using this truck route. We have those providing goods and services to those in the country. We have those going to, play, to Pleasant View Cemetery. We have those going to the tree dump. We have those using the road for walking and biking and even cross country. So you can see it's not just the we property owners who are benefiting from this. And so we have a much higher rate than anybody else in town, any of these other districts. And we just feel that we need to be more comparable. And somehow, we, I think Mr. Holton applied for a grant. I don't think that happened. And uh, at another meeting, uh, I think the city council said, yes, we do need to, to take up some of the slack here. And uh, we think that would only be fair. Peggy, do you want to, you want to say anything? I have a really kind of minor thing, but they are necessarily... Excuse me, sir. I probably can't reach the microphone anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they are necessarily ruined a really nice tree. We have walkers and bikers and all that would stop, cool off right there and go. And all of a sudden, here comes this great big machine with men that don't understand what I'm saying or you're saying, I couldn't even stop them. And I thought, well, maybe they'll just take a little off. No, they had a great big machine with claws. They took the east side of the tree, just whack. And if anybody would like to drive by and see our tree now, it's terrible. And I talked to Mr. Holton about it. He said perhaps the city uh, might pay for removing it or a new, new one or something or other. So they, they, really, they really did a bad thing. And I felt it wasn't even necessary had they trimmed just a few branches instead of just whacking it to pieces. And by the way, our lawns all look terrible. <laughs> the grass that they planted was not good. It's, I don't know if it's planted at the wrong time or we all kept it watered and watered, you know, but it just didn't seem to come. And I understand that that was to be replaced too. Thank you. Rossbergs? <laughs> already tell you I don't like talking. I agree with Mr. Keck. Um, this benefit is not to me. Uh, right now I can't afford it. I lost my job. It's, you know, I got a different job. I won't be making as much. It's going to be a hard struggle. And they, we got assessed with 20000 extra this year and on the taxes. Not sure why. We didn't do anything great that I know. It's just, it seems like it's really hard for us to pay to live in Plainview. You know, as much as I love being in Plainview, I can't afford to be here. So, I don't know. You know we were told it was going to be one amount, and then when we saw what it was going to be, we got passed out. Yeah. You got anything else? <laughs> yeah, you won't talk. <laughs> but, yeah. I just, I just don't know. I'm just saying our finances now, this has been a real hard year for us. You know, I've been cut down a day a week in wages. And I just, and, I just don't see how you think homeowners. And it seems like every time you start getting ahead with something, something always plows us right back in her. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know if it'll do any good, but that's it. <laughs> so, Unless you have anything. <laughs> Well, the only thing I can think of is to do what you're going to do um, for our assessments and our taxes. Then when the time you do for the taxes, I'll figure out what my <laughs> finance is going to be like. Yeah, as to whether we have to sell and move. And then go from there. Isla Frederick? 
as you know, I'm on a Frederick and I live on my street. I think all of your comments are wonderful. And I I love the street. It is wonderful. They did a good job. And maybe we could take up a benefit, a paving benefit. <laughs> but it is what it is. So I, I'm willing to put up with whatever the majority comes up with. Thank you. Kent? I was just advised by mom to come to listen, so. Okay. <laughs> Larry Schaefer? Nothing? Nothing. Lyle Rayford? I think you're all pretty well covered. Yeah. Michael G. Lane? In agreement with everybody else. Michelle and Jan? Norda Johnson? Thank you. My name is Kathleen Rocky. I'm an attorney in Norfolk, and I'm here representing my friend Norda Johnson uh, about the matters. And, and I'm not going to try to reiterate um, what it, some people have stated, but I do want to talk a little bit about my client's position. Uh, because it's a little bit uh, somewhat unique um, in that, uh, as, as with most of everyone who's come here today, she's a private citizen. She's a, a lady who's retired and on a fixed income. She doesn't actually reside in Plainview. Uh, she resides in Tilden, Nebraska, but she uh, has very close ties to this community and has had for many years, having uh, grown up in the area. Uh, this, harsh, this assessment is a tremendous hardship to her personally, uh, the property that is being assessed that she owns is agricultural property. Uh, it's now uh, an 11, part of an 11-acre alfalfa field that uh, borders the, the ball fields on that part of town. Uh, she has 156 feet with a proposed assessment of in excess of $26,000, which for a person on a fixed income poses a tremendous hardship. Uh, this particular area is on the edge of the development, uh, and it, because it doesn't have a home, it doesn't have regular access in and out, except during times when the alfalfa is being tended to. Uh, so it's very, there's very little traffic generated from her property onto this street, so she really has uh, a somewhat unique situation in that respect. Uh, we are concerned about the scope of the project and we agree with the comments made by others tonight that this is a project that while it may give benefit to people that, that own property along the line of, along the street, uh, it benefits a number of people uh, and it does benefit very much the, high, the heavy truck traffic that is um, common to this area and, and that you would expect would, would want to use this road because it is such a nice road. Uh, we understand that the project contemplated the construction of, of a street that would accommodate that kind of traffic, which is not the traffic that's generated from my client's property or, in fact, from the other, the other owners of the property in the area. So we want you as a board to consider uh, the benefit uh, that these folks in this area receive and that they, the benefit that they receive is of residential nature versus agricultural nature in the sense that they're not hauling crops or livestock out of these properties onto this street, but there are many people who are able to utilize this street. We are concerned too about the somewhat moving target associated with this project. The numbers have been uh, nowhere near what uh, we are being assessed in the sense that as Mr. Keck mentioned, there were other figures that were that were given out at various times uh, that certainly did not put these people on notice of the scope of the project and the amount that's being assessed. Uh, my client does not have a re recollection of getting the initial letter advising her of the assessment and so and not living in Plainview, uh, she is at an extreme hardship in now finding out later of the uh, $26,000 assessment for 156 feet in front of her home, in front of her property. And, and without having a home there, uh, as I indicated, she's not using that any, on any sort of a regular basis. Uh, so we would ask that you consider those factors, uh, consider the, what you're asking private citizens to come up with in terms of dollars and cents uh, for the, the significant nature of this project. 
I'm not sure I have this specifically, but it's my understanding, and the engineer can probably address this the best, that we're talking about a 12-inch depth to this particular street, which I believe is uh, substantially greater than what you would typically see in a, a city street in, in the town of Plainview. He would, I know, be much better able to address that than me, but uh, if that is indeed the case, if it is a 12-inch street that was constructed, mm -hmm. Uh, when compared to what we typically have, uh, that also I think demonstrates that the, the purpose behind this was to accommodate other users, not just the people who live or own property along uh, this street. Uh, so we would ask that you consider those factors as you decide how to fairly and equitably uh, handle matter of this assessment. Thank you. Terry James. Well, you folks are in luck because I'm not a good public speaker. <clears throat> but I guess my concern is, is one thing is the concrete itself. From my understanding, understanding we're in a residential area around West Street. I understand the residential area is probably four to six inch deep. This is probably eight inches deep. And I guess my concern is why am I paying for an additional two inches when I pay when I live in a residential area? <clears throat> the other thing is you can go up down West Street. I don't know if anybody on West Street has any heavy equipment at all. None whatsoever. Now we're penalized because heavy equipment is being on that street. And the other thing is, you know, I don't live here, I live in a small town. Okay. But I do have property here. Okay, and it's pretty tough to swallow to take a $19,000 loss before you can sell it. That really hurts. And the other part is, is um, I'm also on the city council. I have a population of 140 people. We have yet asked people for money to fix their streets. And we do fix our streets. But we have what we call a budget. We have a five-year budget, we have a 10-year budget. We know what streets we're going to operate in this week. The biggest thing with any type of government, when you fix a street, you've got to have the money. If you don't have the street, or if you don't have money, you don't fix it. And the other part is that's why the government themselves are in trouble. That's why they talk about it every day. So I hope you've got a better plan for the future. That's all I have. Jermaine and Jim. Well, you're, I'm very well known to the city council meetings. I, I knew it'd be you. I know, yeah. if you need to talk. Jim kind of fake, yeah, I meant to stand up. Like <laughs> I, I can handle it here. I want to tell you, I've been coming to city council meetings for 16 years now. <laughs> Many of you haven't even been here 16 years in the council, and I remember sitting back in the row here and talking about let's do some street improvements and street improvements. For 15 years, we've done none um, to do anything regarding it. So the question comes now, um, you know, can we look back of we, what can we do in the past, what we can do in the future, and I can say that in 15 years nothing has been done. So you can say to yourself, well, we're not affecting somebody in the last two years if we do it differently now. Um, the questions that we have come up with, if, if there's really going to be no cost to the city, if you guys decide not to put anything into it, then why don't we pave every street there is in this town? Hire ash hops and let's do the whole town and let's make this town better off the bat because if I don't have the money, the next person doesn't have the money either, and let's just make this town better. So we need to think about that. The one thing that hasn't really been mentioned on some of the properties, sidewalk, um, especially ours, was taken out, not replaced. I believe the city ordinance is to put some sidewalks back in, whatever that discussion needs to be, along with curb and gutter, which ours already had curb and gutter in it, and so now with the um, engineering, We've repaid that with private funds. Was it assessed or wasn't it assessed previously? Not sure, but was it paid with private funds? And the answer is yes at that time. We talk about proper notice. As you can see, when we've received proper notice, we're all here when it needs to be done. So if it was, and unfortunately there's people that weren't in, um, live in this community, or have no desire to have a subscription to the Plainview News, or come downtown. So I want to make sure that going forward we understand that. We also know that nobody is perfect, but there was some errors in the engineering um, process. Several um, driveways were redone, poured once, and re-looked at after the walkthrough was done, realizing they were too steep, 
and realizing that we probably would have had some ice and some balls and things like that happening or dragging equipment in because we do have some type of equipment with a, a closed trailer coming in um, quite frequently and we would have dragged from the get-go. Um, we also had sprinkler systems that were tore up. Um, I know the city at this time is taking care of that bill on some things, but of course it's going to be in this engineering bill also. So then we're paying for it again for an error that is our private property that was damaged. And I don't think any of you would like your private, par private property damaged and um, have to pay for it yourself. Um, if we have to pay for it, I think we maybe should have had a little bit more saying on stop signs, um, speed bumps, thickness, things like that. I can tell you the traffic is faster than ever. And I've been coming here for 15 years and telling you, do something. I'm probably the only one that have the small children on the street, and it's too bad now my sidewalk is taken up because they are riding on the road and going in our circle driveway and making it. So um, I'm asking again, law enforcement needs to do something, and you need to do something fast. Um, future plans going forward. I know Ninth Street's in the process right now. Um, I do know that this property on that street that's not even worth the assessment that's going to be value at if you continue with this exact value. So you're going to ask homes, you're going to be owning homes. It's my thing, you'll, you'll own that property because it's going to be unsellable and um, the city will start to own houses. Um, we want people to move to town. Jim and I are younger ones on the street. We moved to town, it was paved, had no idea that we'd be coming 15 years later, or we haven't been in town 15, 11 years later, and our street was paved. And then we decided to put concrete, so we needed to pay for this. So I do think it's hard and difficult. We've got a lot of young friends and couples. Laurel is expanding, you've driven to Laurel. That whole new property up there, those people did not pave that street. That was the town making improvements to make it better. Um, I just really think that, you know, as cost in the past, um, labor has gone up, concrete has gone up, and maybe some of you did pave your street in front of you, if that's what um, a comment was made from a city council member. Times have changed, the house values haven't changed, and you're asking for these house values, you know, to go up 20 to 30,000 when they want to sell them. And I just don't think in plain view, we have a hard enough time, our numbers are going down, to get people to move to town when you're asking for that to add on to their value of the house. And we do know that we have talked talk to a few other towns, and yes, it can be assessed to the taxes of the whole town, not just the individuals living on the street, which was mentioned at one time that was not possible. And we have talked and talked to a few other towns, and that is possible, which goes back to my, at least 15 years ago, we have not done anything in these streets. <coughs> Our first point here is that we just bought our house a year and a half ago. Um, I'm sure everyone else that lived on our street, I know that everyone else who lived on our street and everyone here at this meeting was notified that this was going to happen before it did. Um, we were not notified at all. And to be in your 20s, to try and pay for a kid, and have all these things that you can't pay for and then get almost a $17,000 bill in the mail is unheard of to me. Um, we did not want our street paved. We live on the corner. We don't even have a driveway that connects to it. Everybody else on that street has a driveway or a building or something that connects to that street. We did not, we just happened to have purchased our first home on a corner lot. So in terms of the benefit to the owners, it was off of square footage and we don't have a benefit. You say that our house value would go up, our value from 2015 to 2016 actually went down. So it did not, it offers us no benefit at all. Um, we're, we got married young, which I don't regret at all, but you know, you don't have finances when you're married young. I was in a terrible car accident. I got pushed back in school. We had all those medical bills. We're just now trying to get back on our feet. We have student loan debt. We have other debt. I need a new vehicle that we can't afford. So I don't see how we should be paying for a city street when we can't afford to pay for other things.
for the the yard work, basically the grass kind of is a joke. There's nothing but weeds. I've had to pick up concrete chunks. Um, I've got damage to my mower or parts that I've had to replace. I mean, they tore up our yard. It's not level. It's worse than it was before. Um, Which they did park all of their machinery and everything on that ship of land because we don't have a driveway or anything that connects. We just happened to have that corner and they tore up our yard and everything on that whole side. So if you could just think of yourselves when you were in your early 20s when you just had your first kid and you just bought your first house and you just graduated college, think if you would have $17,000. city limit falls within the jurisdiction of the city as far as zoning purposes. But it is zoned as agricultural according to the map that I've seen, although my map might be somewhat old. Uh, it has always had an agricultural component to it. In that, uh, I believe that the previous owners raised chickens, guinea hens out there, that sort of thing. Uh, Jim is raised cattle in some of the pastures. I, I have no idea if the previous owner used the pastures and the pens for cattle. Jim does. Uh, it, uh, like I say, it, it is zoned as agricultural and the uh, <coughs> assessor treats it as agricultural. It says on the assessment sheets that it has a barn, which it does. It has a barn and a chicken uh, processing house, I guess we call it. But that's, that's our point. This is an agricultural piece of property. And uh, if I can take that into consideration your deliberations and years. Thank you. I actually live in Hastings, Nebraska. I'm a friend of uh, Michelle and Jan Rodney and, and Ronnie Evans. I guess my question is, before it closes, so they don't come to very many of these, is this. Mr. Curtis started off the meeting by talking about um, how the assessment and the procedure will work without, if there's adjustments or no adjustments by the engineering for the assessment for the bond. And I don't know, maybe I need to have that explained to me again. But I don't know if we want to let it, or I guess my question is, and maybe Mr. Curtis can explain that better, do we want to let it close 
because there's been comments, there's been newspaper articles that adjustments probably maybe should be done by the city, but as a group here tonight, I don't know if we have that privilege of knowing those discussions that have been done by the city to possibly make some adjustments. Does that make sense, Mr. Curtis? Well, it does. If there's more discussion here, it'll certainly be amongst the council. The meeting will still be open. I don't know how long they'll keep the meeting open. Uh, but I guess from the public standpoint, you folks would like them to consider the possibility of adjustments. And if they do, uh, they'll ask the engineer to rework some numbers and come back. But uh, I don't know that it changes your everybody's position. Nobody wants to pay as much as they're asked to pay. I, I understand that. I guess it's a procedure I'm, I'm asking about. Well, the procedure if they get if it gets closed here, right? Then these people, we have nothing else we can do. As I understood what you explained at first. Well, everybody can make their pitch, and then the hearing will be closed. Okay. The council will then enter into some deliberations, have some conversation, and either pass a resolution tonight using the existing schedule or request their engineer to work up some various alternatives and then table and put it off and then they'll come back for another meeting. Now that would be another public meeting. Okay. It would not be another hearing. Everybody's right. been heard. Right. But everybody could certainly attend the next public meeting if there is one and see what's going on. That's what I misunderstood, Mr. Curtis. Okay. If there would be another public meeting. Oh, sure. there was, okay. And this won't be, just because we closed the special hearing I understand. does not mean we close our meeting. Okay. That's, I just, so we're able to hear the discussion sure. of the value of the system. Okay. Thank you very much. Then I would just like to add one more comment. I would ask council members to readjust the engineering numbers due to curb redoing um, a sprint bus that we're going to pay for again and ask for the driveways that had to be redone. Those numbers would change somehow. So I'd ask the council to look at that. I just like to ask you guys to readjust this assessment also. Just put that in consideration. <laughs> Legally, I don't know, but if you pay for the street, it makes it your street, so then you could put up a toll booth. Everybody driving on it could just pay their fair share. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That may be true, Green, but I tried that up at the river on Dwayne the White. He suggested he would hurt me. I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> We talked about it several months ago about um, at least the people right right And I do see them up there once in a while, but I tell you what, I see semis, I see cars, I see all kinds of traffic going 25, 55 miles an hour past my house. And they're already in town for two blocks. <laughs> so how fast are they coming past? All these other guys' houses. And that's certainly something anybody that cares should come back and talk about, but that's not something they can no, deal that's with in this year. Right. Well, why don't we have the police chief here? Because that's not the scope of this meeting, Sherry. Well, it needs to be on the next. Well, I guess I'll put that on the next like agenda. Right. And Sherry, I can do that. I can put that on the, the regular council meeting that will be in um, September. I will add that to the agenda. That, that being said, I'd really like more people to be here, the residents that can speak on our behalf because when we only have one or two, I mean, I agree 100%. We've talked about this in the past. When there's one in the crowd, nothing happens. But when you have a powerful body, it gets to sit on. I do have one comment. I never knew about the, the grading, so I had to back a trailer and they removed some stuff and I can't get the trailer in there. I see need somebody to help me lift it up. I, this was new to me because they did let me do something of their trailer. So I might not be able to back it. So I'm going to use it. That's new to me.
motion. There's a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Judy? Aye. Tom? Aye. Grant? Aye. Almost. Hearing is adjourned. <coughs> stays there, but the people need not pay so long as the property isn't developed and used in a manner that accesses the street. And then if it is developed, if in Norton's case, for instance, a house was put up there, that would then trigger the assessment and it would become due. But it's my belief that the ag exemption allows a person to at least temporarily escape paying. But that's slightly different than the placement of the assessment in the first place. Uh, not something I would pass on until we see a request for a filing for ag exemption. Uh, but the assessment, I think, is placed anyway. And that's filed on a city level, not on a county level? Yeah, that's correct. But there's a very specific procedure in the statute. I didn't bring a book to read it to you. But uh, that's how it works. Gene? If that's an ag assessment, they're out of the city limits. The city limits go to the center of the street. So then why is that not a county assessment when that half of the road is out of the city limits? Well, the city has control of certain development aspects and certain legal aspects within its zoning jurisdiction, which is out of mile. The issue of the assessment of the property, so far as we understand, the bond council people believe it is properly assessed as a city development, so long as it's done according to their format and their notices and their plans, all of which has been done. So then, then the residents of Plainview will have to absorb that assessment if they don't pay that. Anything that is granted a payment exemption from an ag exemption effectively would become the same as the intersections and the other things that the city is absorbing. <coughs> Excuse me, which is substantial anyway. Yeah. But it would get added to that and the city is out of pocket. The city has paid all the bills. Yeah. And they just won't recover those assessments at least right away until the property is developed. But then the city will have to budget money to pay oh, yes. this, all these intersections. The city's got to pay the bonds whether the assessments come in or not. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
Well, the ag deferral exemption that you're referring to, Bruce, uh, I looked at 1924-28, which is, I think, the statute that applies. Could be. In, in, in my client's case, uh, her land is annexed into the city, so I don't think she qualifies for that reason. And the statute talks about a deferral requiring an application with the city board within 90 days of creation of the improvement district. Well, the improvement district was created quite some time ago prior to knowing what the cost would be. And so... Um, well, as I said, I don't have that in front of me, yeah. but you may be correct. I, I think for my client's position, that's, a, that's <laughs> problematic. That, 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 that's think. not a, I don't, I don't think that's something we can take advantage of. We did, we did take a look at that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Had I been informed in 2014 that the street was going to be repaired then with uh, that <coughs> type of construction, I could have applied for the uh, exemption. But now it's too late. Sure. Well, I think we'll find if we check back in the city records that everybody was notified according to law, both by publication and by some mailing. The only certified letter I ever got was on the 27th of January. You have a question. Why did all of us get a certified letter of this assessment schedule? And the answer is all of us sitting here know. You stood up and didn't send everybody a certified letter the first time. I mean, I don't, we don't get the plan to pay for it. I think, I think screwed up is unfair. The bond company people set the rules. They have a very specific formula that must be followed to create a valid paving district, and what they require was done according to Nebraska law. Okay, you didn't screw up, you get behind it under a law. Is it not right to, why does this have to be certified to us then? Why shouldn't you just go publish this in the paper? That was the, that the that was the instruction that um, I had from the bond council, Jim, was that I was to send a certified letter letting you guys know about the meeting tonight. That was that was the instructions I was given. So that's why you got one. It's just awful funny that we didn't get a certified letter and most of the, the people were unaware of the original meeting. I mean, a phone call would have went a long way. Those that got the letter to begin with, Nobody got letters. Nobody, Nobody got letters. Got letters. What, where, where, where did they get the option to say whether or not they wanted their street paid? When was the, that? This, actually, folks, this is not the time for this. The hearing is closed. It is now our time to discuss. You've all been heard. You all had a chance to speak. Now this is our time to speak. Okay. We're listening. Okay. Can we ask you to speak in the mic a little bit? I'm sorry. Yes. It seems like it's not coming across when I go back here. Split up a little bit. Oh. So we'll go to 2014-01. I guess 
personally where I sat at that point. Um, I don't, you know, I don't speak on behalf of anybody at this point, but I definitely take that into consideration because <coughs> that was one of the things. You know. so. I have grown up at recent meetings about the fact that the Thornburg property that's on that street behind Family Dollar was $118 a foot. And I felt that that was curb and gutter, it was everything. The jeans was less because it's not as wide as the curb and gutter. Um, but I, I feel that the people on 9th Street in that residential area should be charged at the same price per foot as the people. West Street, Judy? West Street, not Ninth Street. Street. West Street. West Street, I'm sorry. I think that should be charged at the same rate. It's 164. Yeah, 164. Yeah, 164. Yeah, that's, that's district court. Yeah. Well, to put a plan to it, then I guess I would suggest to you that if, if you're going to deal with these district questions one at a time, if that is your thought, then the appropriate thing to do would be to make a motion to table the like final it. assessment of District 1 pending the engineer reworking the schedule on that amount that would then be considered <coughs> at a future date. So you could make that into a motion or you can discuss it further before you make a motion, but that's the proper way to go about it. I agree. I agree with Judy for the fact that that was probably the the most common street, I guess, that didn't have special work that had to be done. You know, there were a few light-ins and change order things that had to happen with it, but for the most part, I would say that was you know had the curbing under and had everything to go along with it. So that was 116, 84. 84. So that means. On West Street, the city would basically be fifty three dollars a foot. Right. I'll make a motion that we change that assessment to one hundred and sixteen dollars and eighty four cents per foot. A little discussion. Does that go back to Terry to rework the numbers then on the assessment to you, or who? That would be the rest of the motion, I guess. And table the final assessment vote until some future date. Are you calling for that for the entire six paving districts or just no, on Northwest Street? We're only working on West, Northwest Street. Okay. Okay. So if I've got this right, Judy, you're you're moving to table the final assessment numbers, the final assessment for district 2014-1 to change from 168.87 per linear foot to 168. Yes, that's okay. correct. What was that number? 168.87, Kelly? Yes, sir. To 116.84. Can you, can you with, that, that? with that question before you before you vote on that, Terry, what about timing your rework of schedule? What do you have available for an upcoming meeting? And can we coordinate this with Terry and, and add that to the motion? Or do you want to do another motion separately? Well, so far, we just able to rework the schedule by two points. Terry, I'd like to buy August the Is that possible? Yes. Okay, so you could have another meeting August 30th at what time? That's our budget workshop at 515. So let's add it to that. If I buy it. So do we table it for August 30th? Table the final assessment for District 2014-1 from 168.87 to 116.84. Numbers to be provided from the engineer for the August 30th, 2016 meeting at 5:15 p.m. I will second. We have a motion and a second for Judy's motion. Judy. Aye. Tom. Aye. Grant. Aye.
guys hear me all right? No. Oh, no. I don't feel anything. I feel like you can't. Yeah. can't hear anything. Yeah. You've got to get closer to those mics. Yeah, I don't feel that. I think we'll set you that up. I'm talking. Is this any better? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> we don't have to restart the meeting, do we? That's <laughs> 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 the beginning. that is still considered a district up on 4th Street by the hospital. That district won't go away. However, engineering costs were still applied onto that. By statute, by law, we would have been in our jurisdiction to assess that $10,000 back onto the other districts. Now, in looking at Daryl Keck and the idea of fairness, we knew that was not fair at all. So that is one item the city is absorbing just because it got turned turned down by the city council. No, it didn't have to be. Another one, I just want to make sure it's very clear because there's a lot of misinformation that goes out there. There's a lot of you that come in and stop in my office and I appreciate every second and I hope you always do if you want something clarified. Some people were into the misunderstanding that there was a water sewer particularly a sewer district, also set up at the same time, and then you were paying on West Street for the sewer extension that was put in. That was 31000 You are not. The city did do that in terms of development to make that a better sewer extension to reach to the, at least to the north end of that West Street area within the city limits. So that was 31000 There are a lot of expenses that are coming under the city's umbrella that they are going to have to work with anyway. Then it becomes a matter of the numbers, just so we're clear on this. There's a levy that I will have to work with to assess, and this is what Corrine was trying to say, what is the fairness back to the entire population of the city to pay for streets based on that benefit formula. And that is what they're doing right now. So this is a good thing, and I'm hoping you understand and hope you, that you appreciate the transparency of which this type of meeting is being held, because this is a chance, this is your chance to talk about what is fair and not fair. There were several, and I'll, I'll wrap this up so you go on the next one, there are several that have been in my office, and I understand they're not here, but come into the office and absolutely threaten to slit my throat if I don't work with the council to assess 100%, because by golly, I was on my street and I was assessed the entire amount. I usually came back, what was it, $10 a linear foot back then? It doesn't matter. To them, whenever it was, they had to go through that process, and a lot of you may have brothers, sisters, mothers, aunts, uncles, that had to do that, so whatever the amount was, a lot of them felt that it was unfair to sit there and think that the resident doesn't have some vestment into this street because this was an improvement. So, Corrine, I appreciate that, but the city and the citizens will be, regardless, absorbing some of the hit on this improvement as part of an improvement project. And I, too, check with just about every town in this area within 50 miles, and I know exactly how every town did their street assessments. And guess what? Plainview does not operate in a vacuum or a bubble. This is very common and very standardized, and this is the way most people have had it done, including our neighbors to the west or east, Osmond. So those don't fly with me. So, I mean, I'm just telling you, if you want to be fair, this is how it's being done as a standardized way of doing street assessments, and it's done everywhere around us. Okay, let's move to uh, district number 2014-03. This is the, the southwest, I believe. Yes.
current dollars per foot is, uh, if I'm running the math right, we don't have it around us about $253 a foot. 253 Yeah, that's exactly what I came up with per foot. This is another case where I feel that um, the things that cost so much money for that street to be paved had a lot to do with things underneath the current blacktop asphalt that was there that had to be fixed because the dirt, the clay, whatever is under there to make it a solid surface had, to, had an expensive fix. I think that's something else that the city should absorb. I don't know that I don't know that all of that is from that, but I think that portion of it at least should be. If the subgrade issue is basically what put it well above what we were expecting a year from today, back in August of uh, 2015, <coughs> the numbers are all these districts are relatively close to what we talked about in August of 2015, other than that one. And it was, it's basically that subgrade that, that, that did it. If you took that out, it would be relatively close to what we originally had said. Which was? Uh, well, originally we said 179.50. And I just earlier I took it out, I just took that subgrade out of the spreadsheet just to see what it would be, and it came out to 177.03. So it's like the other ones, it would have been in the ballpark of what we said in a year ago, had it not been that summary. I guess this, for me, kind of southwest probably has the same kind of traffic as northwest does. You know, people coming and going from town, farmers coming to town, farm to market, a lot of the same things. Like, I guess my thought is we should probably treat it the same way we're treating northwest. I'd make a motion that we lower the assessed value, have it carried on the numbers, I should say, down to the $116.84 a foot. I'll second that motion. Yeah. In full, that motion is the same as the first motion. It's table the table final seven. decision to. Yeah. The date previous to the 30th. Just a quick math that puts the city eating $136 a foot. Judy, you seconded that? I seconded that. Okay. I have a motion and a second for. District number 2014-03 to have Terry run the numbers at 116.84 per foot instead of the 253.33. Judy? Aye. Tom? Aye. Grant? Aye. Mr. Forrest has a question. Bye. Assessment value, is that still prorated over a 10-year period? When the, when the assessments are placed, I believe any property owner has a right to pay in full within 50 days with no interest. If that is not done, then 1 15th becomes due and the rest is spread over the next 14 years. And the rate of interest we have yet to be informed by the bond company, they will let us know within a matter of days these bond values and interest rates change all the time but they will let us know what that rate is that they can sell the bonds at, and then the city has to add on a quarter or a half percent. But it's still municipal rate interest, so it's usually pretty cheap. I'd hate to pick a number and say what it'll be. The bond company gets to do that. So you table district three. Yes. And if we would move to 2014-04, which is Pilcher Avenue behind Family Dollar. The 
only comment I would make, Mr. Mayor, on that particular one is I do empathize with the uh, Thornburg. The situation that they had was um, unfortunate and that is something that at the time, but for the record so that everyone here knows, there was one objection on that particular street and it was by the prior owner that sold them the place, Chris Ryan. We have that in the written objection. Um, so there was that for property is still objected. So the, the continuity of, of you know objecting property is still there. So now between them and the previous owner is not within our our jurisdiction. Uh, jurisdiction to sit right. there. We're looking at the assessment. If you were to compare, which is what we've talked about in the last two three months, apples to apples, oranges to oranges, this is the standardized street that you would see, eight inches thick with curb and gutter. There was some work done on the sanitary, the water sewer system there, but that, once again, the city has already taken the hit on that, um, even though that was not in the original. We did the change order, we swallowed that uh, extra cost that's on that. The street value itself, though, the assessment at $116 something per foot is your standard eight inch curb and gutter street that you'll probably see in most any kind of gap paving if we continue to go future unless the cost of the concrete goes up. This, this is a bit of an unusual situation, but there's a, a comment I've got for you to inform the council. I was contacted on this property, this assessment, by the people that own Family Dollar, which I take it is this coal portfolio. There is no one here tonight from Family Dollar, is there? Uh, they left it, they raised a question to me of whether if assessments were lowered on other property, would they be added back on them? Apparently they've been stuck elsewhere. Oh, the big corporation from out of town can stand this, we'll take it off the citizens and put it on them. I told them I thought it was really not legally possible or allowable to raise their assessment at this hearing. That is not to say that you could not absorb some of the assessment on, say, property A and B if you chose to do so. I mean, the question that was raised by the, the homeowners, they have a house that faces east. Are they fully benefited like they would have been if they didn't have any paving at all? I mean, if you want to take something of that into account, you could. But I think all you can do, if you do anything, is agree to, again, absorb someone, some back for the city. You can't shuffle it across the street. Right. Were you informed about the situation no. when you bought the house? We wouldn't have bought it. Can they take any recourse to the seller? Well, and Judy, they are right. They have known, they are, out of anybody in here, they have the least amount of benefit of that pavement. They don't have a, they don't have a driveway access to it. They don't have. I, I, I'm certainly not in a position, I'm a bleeding heart myself anyway, but I would caution you that it would set a precedent that you will have to maybe uh, uh, observe I, I agree. in the future. I agree. Well, the rule is assess according to the benefit as you determine it to be. Yep. If you determine that they are less benefited and you want to absorb some of that, you can. I just wanted to point out to you, it doesn't have to be across the board. And you're not deciding tonight, but if you want some numbers reworked, that's what you make your request on. choose to go with percentage or something of that nature, I would uh, recommend uh, as the administrator to look at what you have on ninth and use that as an arbitrary figure. If you do choose to drop a number on an individual property because of lack of benefit, which is certainly proper, then you would probably go no less than 87 because that is what you're charging on the 9th Street and that actually, you know, because of what we have to absorb now with the levy, I'm just trying to keep things in, in perspective. 87 foot. Yeah, and I don't know what that percentage comes out to be, but it would be reasonable. And on 9th Street, 87 dollars per foot? 
I think so, something like that. Uh, 8748. 8748. 9378 That's, yeah, that going south. There are 116 that you are giving us, or possibly giving That's us. what their price was engineered at, because they don't have curvy gutter or anything. It's a narrow street. It's a narrow street. We're talking south. That's already done. Oh, wow. Jeez. The one going north. I don't even want to talk about that at this point. I know why I won't. I won't be on the council next year. <laughs> okay. Do we have a motion to have Terry rerun numbers for 04? to just table it to wait for the rest and you can still think about it or she'd have to tell Terry to work up numbers before he came to the meeting but if you table it you at least put it off to the 30th to make a final decision it might be appropriate to decide them all the same night I agree I'll make a motion to table 04 2014 04 till the 30th I'll second that Motion is second to table paving district 2014 04. Judy? Aye. Tom? Aye. Grant? Aye. 2014 05 is South 9th Street. Based on the work done, I don't have any additions or subtractions. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Without curb and gutter, and by far the lowest priced um, stretch. That's the eighty-seven dollars, Mike. Yep. Put it on your foot. I'll make a motion to table. 2014 05 until the 30th. Also. Also, uh, I have a motion and a second to table 2014 05 until the 30th meeting along with the rest of it. Judy? Aye. Tom? Aye. Grant? Aye. That's pretty much it. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. Aye. Tom? Aye. 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 Now, from, and Bruce has already iterated this and reiterated it, the 30th will be a public meeting to finalize and decide these numbers. On the other hand, tonight was the night to speak, and I think that you did get your point across well enough to see a lot of these numbers come down substantially. Um, the 30th is not the time to bring back up again um, those arguments after the hearing. It, you're, it's a public meeting, you're certainly welcome, but it's not necessarily a public forum. There's a difference. So you can certainly come, that's gonna be a public open meeting and see exactly what the numbers are. That way everybody's on the same page. What time? Uh, 5.15. No, 5.15. I, I guess now that it's over, I have a question for Terry or for you or Bruce. If there was damage that was caused or anything like that when this all happened, do we have a time frame we can go back on the contractor or well, something? We, we, Terry, you want to, yeah, go ahead. We've got a warranty period. Okay. Um, we know already of a couple of different things that need to be fixed. Typically in these situations, especially with Ashoff, with A&R, 
generally they let, like to wait towards the end of the uh, warranty period to fix things. So that way they're fixing everything all at once and not doing little bits here and there. So, I mean, I've heard the grass thing come up, so I don't know if that's I, I've problem. seen it. I've seen it but, firsthand. There's, so, I mean, they, they scraped off all of the good dirt, put it on the county yeah. road side of things, and they gave all the, tub, the stuff they dug out for the sewer. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's one thing we'll note. Um, just if, if there are things that come up that you see, you know, we just want to make sure we document it, uh, even if it's not till spring until they fix it. Are you, it. not to put them on the place, but are you aware of, Lorenzo's hot water heater situation it had nothing to do with JEO. No. Basically, there was a gas line. You probably familiar, aren't you? I do. I am. I mean, there there was a gas line hit. It was a located gas line, if I understand right. It basically, um, maybe you can explain what happened. What? And correct me if I'm wrong. Zach was Zach ran this, but he kept me in the loop. They hit Lorenzo's line. And you guys have two water heaters, correct? Correct. And so they fixed the line, got everything all fixed, got them back online. Um, one water heater, Zach lit, and it took off and worked fine. Um, the second one did not. So they had to foot they had to foot out money to purchase a new water heater because it wouldn't light. Now whether that was Ashoff's fault, whether that was just that water heater's time, nobody can prove anything. Right. But it was a working appliance before the paving district started. Right. Now I, I don't know that that's the city's responsibility, though, because it, I, if it's a located line and the contractor hits it, right, that's between them and the you know the contractor, and that's I, I I think that's the way it would be approached. Is it's not really your problem, it's the contractor's problem. But it's not. I don't think it's necessarily our. Our job to do something about that. So, do they have? They're supposed to contact the contractor themselves. Then, to me, that's like if they hit somebody's car. It's a, you know, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be on you guys if, if they hit someone's car. It'd be because if I go, if I go, to be a bore here, but is the meeting adjourned? Yes, sir. <laughs> this can't go on indefinitely. Okay. Uh, you can certainly uh, tell me what we should look into. I can talk to Terry. We can get after this. But okay. if we're truly adjourned, we can't just keep having meetings. Okay. You're right. Talk to Lorenzo. Yep. Stop in. Tell me the story, and I'll talk to Terry, and we'll see about it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, don't stop in. Here's yours.